January 1st, 2022. I call this meeting to order and ask the clerk to please call the roll. Trustee Daney? Here. Gansey? Here. Gunstein? Here. Hopkins? Here. Ranky? Present. Swanski? Here. President Wallace? Here. We requested that <clears throat> Mr. Matt, <coughs> excuse me, Matt Res Restivo, an elder, an elder at Christ Community Church Joy and Vacation, is that here? You can step up to the podium there, that'd be great. <coughs> Good evening, everyone. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you this evening in a posture of thankfulness. We are thankful for all of the many things you bless us with in our lives, our family, our friends, our opportunities, and the decisions made that will be done here this evening. Lord, I pray a special blessing that the decisions made this evening would ultimately honor you, that they would honor one another. We know that your word instructs us to govern with just wisdom, discernment, and most of all, peace. Lord, we pray these things this evening. We lay them all at your feet, Lord. It's in your name we ask these things. Amen. 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 Thank you, Matt. I pledge allegiance to the flag, the flag of the United, United States, States of America, America to the republic which is stands, one nation, under God, God indivisible, indivisible, with liberty and justice, justice for all. all. <laughs> you might have told her to mute. <laughs> Brings us our, to our consent agenda this evening. All items listed on the consent agenda will be enacted in one motion. There will be no separate discussion on items on the consent agenda. That being said, is there anything anyone would like to add or remove from the consent? Nope. Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda, which will include this evening the minutes, board minutes, committee minutes from January 18, 2022. Consent this evening will include the bills list from February 1st, 2022. Consent this evening will also include item C1. The consent this evening will also include items D1 and 2. Second. Moved by Trustee Danny, seconded by Trustee Gunstein. Gunstein. Um, please call the roll. Trustee Gansey? Yes. Gunstein? Yes. Hopkins? Yes. Ranky? Yes. Sawanski? Yes. Daney? Yes. That motion carries. Next item we have this evening, an O-Treasurer's report. We do have a President's report, a special President's report this evening, honoring a wonderful young lady. Um, for those of you that don't know Valerie, um, she was the first ever village administrator in Bartlett. I think most people in this room know that, but some of you may not. Um, for um, She actually gave Bartlett 30 plus years of service. and. Um, Watched, uh, was very successful at uh, and very integral in the growth of this village from, from the beginning on. So uh, with that, I will turn it over to my good friend, Valerie Salmons. Thank you, Mayor. I'm going to pull this down. I'm just delighted to be here. This is so much fun, and I have no responsibility at all. <laughs> and generally in this room, I'm sweating it. Uh, but I am with me this evening with four people. Uh, two have presentations, and I will introduce them. But first of all, let me introduce uh, my husband, Mark Pritt, who's here, wave, and my daughter, Lauren Aspruth, who many of you might have met, but I always tell people, if that's okay, that she's just a hair away from getting her PhD in agriculture. So I thought I would introduce them. <laughs> and uh, the first person I think I'm going to ask to speak will be Sherry. Now, most of you, I don't know, who, raise your hand if you were on the board with Sherry. Oh, almost. Okay. <laughs> Sherry Borman was on the board for how many terms? For two terms. Two uh, terms, and was a, a great trustee and, and a good friend of mine, and for some reason felt the need to move out on a farm. <laughs> and... She just, she just went to a farm. And it just so happens that Jan Noble, this is Jan Noble, J 
Jan is an investigator with the Department of Public uh, uh, Policy for the state police and, and locals. And uh, I've known Jan for probably close to 30 years because uh, that's about how long I was on the training board. And it just so happens that Sherry moves in exactly across the street from Jan. Now, Jan spends his mornings working and his afternoons farming. So uh, uh, they're out somewhere. I could never figure out where you guys are. But uh, I'm going to let Sherry speak first, and after that, uh, Jan, who has been with the Illinois Department of Training and Standards for Police for many, many years. So I'll introduce, uh, for those of you who don't know her, Sherry Borman. You know, I came here with some prepared remarks, but she said we could have lots of time. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'll get us out of here. <laughs> I promise. Um, I think I'll just say a couple of things about what Je Valerie already said before I get to my prepared remarks. Actually, Jan was today, when I, this is my third meeting. I'm retired, but this is my third meeting of the day. Just saying. So all of you that want to retire, this is what you do. Anyhow, so as I was getting ready to leave for my first of three meetings, Jan was actually across the road splitting wood. Right, Jan? <laughs> so he's busted now. I'm just telling you that's what he was doing. The other thing I need to tell you is that Jan grew up with my brother, and they were played as kids together. They went to school together. On that note, I will get back to my prepared remarks. <laughs> Um, yes, I did occupy that chair filled by Trustee Gunstein for eight years. Of course, the digs weren't quite as this, quite as lovely as this. I mean, they were lovely, but these are new digs. Um, and I served as Sherry Borman. And then a little over 13 years ago, I attended a high school class reunion, met an old classmate, became Sherry Gieske, and the rest is history. And almost 10 years ago, we moved back to Boone County. That's, someday I'm going to get Valerie up there, Valerie and Mark. Um, and that's where I grew up, in Boone County on a gravel road. Well, guess what? Jan and I live on a gravel road again. <laughs> so I'm sort of gone full circle. Did I ever think I'd be back there? No, but that's where I'm at. So why is any of this history important? So because one day, my neighbor, Jan, that you now know, who was at the time the chief of police of Belvedere, stopped to tell me that Valerie Salmons sends her regards. And I'm walking as I walk a lot. And this is, we're in the middle of the road in northern Boone County. And how the heck does he know Valerie Salmons? I'm thinking, wow, the world is this big. So then I figure out that he was on the Illinois Law Enforcement Training and Standards Board. So the weeks go by. And then he mentioned he wanted to get in touch with Valerie and did I by any chance have her phone number because he was entrusted to make sure that an award was delivered to her for her 30 plus years of service. So I might have missed her 2017 retirement, but I was determined not to miss this opportunity to say a few words. So the first time I encountered Valerie up on a stage, I realized she was a force to be reckoned with and that she would take village, the village of Bartlett and make her own. Guess what? We all know she did that. She did just that, but she was also a pioneer. The Standards Board is the first woman to be appointed to it, I think. I think. And the first female chairperson. During her tenure on that board, the DuPage Academy became a reality, and she pushed hard, as we all know she can do, to adjust the culture of police training. She truly believed that a trained officer is an effective officer. There couldn't be a more poignant moment in our time right now that this approach is so desperately needed. She is and always will be my hero. And no one is more deserving of this award and probably a whole lot more than she is. Oh, wait, I forgot. She also told me all about the best eyelashes in the world. 
back to follow there. It is. A lot of her comments I was going to make, but that's okay. It's okay. Um, well, first of all, the top of the evening to everyone here. My name is Jan Noble. I'm a retired police chief, having served uh, 38 years uh, as a police chief in this state. 15 for the village of uh, a Cherry Valley out by Rockford. 23 years as the police chief for the city of Belvedere, Illinois. I broke the record held by another police chief just down the road, uh, George Graves. Chief, you remember Chief Graves? 36 years nonstop as a chief. Um, as fate would have it, I uh, stopped at 38. So they tell me I'm one of the longest serving chiefs in our state. But that's not why we're here. <laughs> Mayor, village trustees, and for friends, family, and employees here of the village of Bartlett. Tonight, it is my honor to present an award on behalf of the Illinois Law Enforcement Training and Standards Board. Valerie is correct. Um, I've served as a board member on the Training and Standards Board while serving as a police chief. But there is life after retirement of being a chief for 38 years. And as I shared with the commander and the chief prior to the start of tonight's meeting, so many of my friends in the greater Northern Illinois area who retire from law enforcement, some of them did not have a plan. The next thing you know, I'm going to their funeral. And when I asked the spouse, or the wife, what in the heck happened? He was in good health when he retired. And the wife would say something like this. Um, he went to the couch and he started, uh, started watching the reruns of Bonanza and, Gun and Gunsmoke. And I said, that's not gonna be me, I'm gonna stay active. So a spot became available as an investigator for the Training and Standards Board. I cover 20 counties in Northwest Illinois, put on about 46,000 miles visiting police chiefs and sheriffs every day. And here's what I check up on once I come and visit your chief. Training mandates that became state law, which now require all police officers in Illinois and by the way, as most of you know, there are 37,000 police officers in our state. So the 254 departments that I go and visit, I sit down with that local police chief, that local sheriff, and we're making sure that those mandates are being met. Valerie played a key role in the development of those standards. And one of the things that was not present here years ago that Valerie, while she was chairman, was the establishment, which is still in full motion today, of the Suburban Law Enforcement Academy located in Glen Allen. She fielded calls from mayors, from police chiefs and sheriffs who were upset about officers having to drive to Champaign-Urbana to attend a basic police academy, to go to Springfield or Southern Illinois, my gosh, why can't we have a suburban academy up here in Northeast Illinois? Well, um, through many hearings and through the approval of the Training and Standards Board, as you well know, that Suburban Law Enforcement Academy is here to stay. And right now, chiefs are waiting six months to a year to get a spot in that police academy at Glen Allen. So there's a lot of retirements going on statewide. There, uh, it's important to note that after that law enforcement suburban academy was established, Valerie was invited to become their very first speaker. They only felt that it was right 
because how she spearheaded and was able to get a, a consensus and to substantiate and prove the need for a suburban law enforcement academy. So Valerie, not only did she give the first um, speech at the graduation ceremony, 10 years later, they invited her back. Do you recall that? Yes, yeah. That. Yep. No, no, they came back. Uh, she came back 10 years later. Part-time part officers, if you remember, 15 years ago, it was a hot topic. Uh, I used to refer to them as weekend warriors. <clears throat> Monday through Friday, they were working a full-time job, maybe at a factory, but on the weekend, they would put on a badge and a gun and they would police um, communities in central and southern Illinois. Well, it finally got to the point where we needed to do something about part-time officers. Once again, Valerie stepped up to the plate after fielding phone calls from mayors who were upset, um, village trustees who relied upon part-time officers to police their town because they couldn't afford a full-time but at the crux and at the, uh, the juncture of all of this was the lack of training that part-time police officers um, lacked in Southern Illinois. So the Training and Standards Board, again, spearheaded and that force being driven forward by Valerie, finally, uh, through state law, if you're a part-time police officer in Illinois, you must meet the same standard that full-time officers do. So hence, part-time police academies popped up throughout Illinois, uh, just down the road here in North Aurora at the mobile training unit. Um, part-time police academies uh, are offered. It's a nine-month process. So Valerie, thank you for, for, for doing that. I'd like to uh, remind you there's a few other things that happen during her tenure. And then I'll have Valerie come up where we'll uh, recognize her with a formal presentation. So, first female board member, first female chairman, and there was a unique graduation ceremony that happened at Chicago's Navy Pier. So if you can imagine um, a very spit and shine group of uh, police recruits having been in the police academy for 14 weeks, their ceremony was to take place at Navy Pier. On the dais was the Chicago mayor. But more importantly, Valerie, you were there on that day uh, to not only acknowledge the work that had been done, but you know who was also in the, in the audience? Sherry was there. Is that right, Sherry? You were there? So it is an honor for me on behalf of the, the people of our state to acknowledge 30 years of service uh, to the Illinois Law Enforcement Training and Standards Board. So Valerie, if I could have you step up, please. I'd like to read what the uh, Illinois Law Enforcement Training and Standards Board has done here for you today. And once again, it's an honor for me to present this award. This award is hereby presented to Valerie Salmons for her distinguished service and contribution in promoting professional law enforcement's training and standards in the state of Illinois. The Illinois Law Enforcement Training and Standards Board hereby recognizes the significant contributions of Valerie Salmons and extends their appreciation for 30 years for 30 years of service, which was exemplary, um, reinforced by her leadership and service that she has pr provided as a member of this board. Signed and dated by the executive director and by the chairman of the board. So Valerie, congratulations. Thank you very much.
it was 30 years. I had forgotten that. Uh, and I am, those positions are appointed by the governor. So I had several different governors who appointed me uh, and reappointed me until they didn't. And uh, then I wasn't on the board anymore. But I was on for 30 years. That was probably enough. <clears throat> and I always felt I had a leg up when I went to those meetings because Bartlett, particularly Bartlett's police department, had such a great reputation in this state that I walked into the room and everybody automatically uh, had a great deal of respect for me because I came from this town. If nothing else, Chief, I have to tell you, <clears throat> I came from this town. Uh, and, and I think that board was great because we listened to each other. There were chiefs and there were uh, other people on that board in different positions, and we would listen to one another and take home those ideas. Uh, and I think a lot of it really helped in terms of vice versa having ideas. So I miss it. It was great. It was a great honor. Uh, and I thank you very much. And Jan and Sherry too. You can go here, they could probably get all three, all of us. Turn your plaque around, Selman. Like you've never gotten a word before. <laughs> Thank you. Good to see you. Thank you, my dear. So wonderful. Congratulations. Are the drinks on Valerie somewhere now, or what? Oh. <laughs> we know where you live. <laughs> All right, that was fantastic. Such a well-deserved honor. Anyone have any questions for staff? I've got uh, just a couple things I'd like to uh, say. Uh, really, no anniversaries this year, which is a rarity, but we do have some February birthdays that I'd like to recognize. Tyler Isham, our System Public Works Director, Happy birthday. And my good friend and fellow trustee, Mr. Adam Hopkins. And he will take uh, any, anything you want to send, Miss Birthdays, on the 19th. By the way, so, so uh, Tyler. That's all I have. That's it? That's all I have. Anything else? Uh, congratulations, Valerie. You deserve that. Congratulations. Brings us to our town hall portion of the meeting. This is the time of the meeting when, if you'd like to address the board, kindly step up to the podium, state your name and address for the record. Um, try to keep your comments to three minutes or less. Anybody like to speak to the board at this time? Hi, Lauren. Hello, everyone. Thank you very much, first of all, for your civil service and what you do, uh, and for inviting me here today to speak to you for a couple of minutes. Uh, my name is Ayman Shahadi, and I'm a candidate in the uh, Democratic primary uh, uh, for June 28th uh, for the 3rd Congressional District, which is a new district uh, that is uh, quite interesting in terms of the way that it's laid out. It runs from Logan Square all the way to uh, Wayne, Illinois, which is really interesting because they, those two um, parts there don't have any connections, but for me, uh, actually was born in Logan Square, and my father, towards the end of his life, uh, actually lived in the town of Wayne. Uh, so we do have a uh, uh, strong presence uh, in this district for about uh, 60 years or so. I am not a politician. Uh, this is my first stint uh, at a, uh, a position in politics. I'm actually a college professor. I teach history. I'm also uh, an artist, 
I uh, have a uh, non-for-profit theater uh, in uh, Chicago's Logan Square neighborhood, uh, which is a social justice initiative uh, designed uh, to create platforms uh, on the artistic level uh, for those who are uh, marginalized. So uh, I thank you all uh, for the opportunity to introduce myself to you, and I hope that uh, I can uh, uh, develop a connection uh, with uh, each and every one of you to learn more about the pertinent issues uh, in Bartlett and tell you a little bit about my platform as well. So thank you very much. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Anyone else like to address the board at this time? Do we have Chris online? Yes, we do. Manning it. And we do have someone that would like to speak. So just one moment. All right, Mr. Vaghani. Yes, hello. Can everyone hear me? Yes. Yeah, could you get in, uh, state your name and address for the clerk, please? Yes, my name is Sam Vagani, resident village of Bartlett since 2015, uh, coming from the neighborhood of South Barrington, Illinois. And, you know, uh, it's, it's great to be here today in front of, uh, in front of the village board. Thank you for the opportunity for speaking. And, uh, uh, you know, once in 2009, in, in 2009, I was a uh, U.S. Green Building Council steering committeeman for the North and Northwest Suburban Chapter. And uh, we have led initiatives to Mr. advocate. Vigani? For, yes. Mr. Vagani, can you yes, hold on hello? a second? Yes. Chris, can you turn it up? We can barely hear him. Yes, it should be better now. All right, go ahead. Okay. Well, I wanted to thank the village board today for the opportunity to speak on the topics of uh, a green certified public buildings. Um, so I, as a village of Bartlett resident and Northwest suburban community resident for over 25 years, um, have, have been, has been an advocate for the Illinois Green Buildings Act of 2009, which is a great initiative and, and an act that had transitioned into law in, uh, in July of 2009, um, with the support of the U.S. Green Building Council National Chapter, as well as the Chicago, Illinois Chapter for uh, advocating and promoting lead certification for public buildings. And um, I wanted to talk and speak the new initiatives on new agendas with the, uh, uh, with the committees of building and zoning of the village of Bartlett on new agenda for transitioning more LEED certified public buildings uh, for the village of Bartlett. Okay. Okay. Yes, that is all. Thank you. Is there anyone else on, Chris? Uh, no, sir. No one has indicated they'd like to speak. All right. Thank you. Next item we have is our standing committee report. In lieu of asking each one of you what's on your committee report, I will just state that um, all of them are either on the consent agenda or there are no items on your reports. That being said, we'll move down to new business. Any new business for the good of the order? Anything new? Any questions? How are we doing on water main breaks? Mr. Dinges. We just had another one at Maine. Oh, did and, we? Uh, and Devon. Uh, we had two actually yesterday. We had one in the morning um, on Bay Court and one right by the bank. Yeah, um, that's one I saw. I think it's all about the freezing temperatures and then it gets above freezing. And with the moisture in the ground, we're going to experience it. This is the time of year where we get the majority of them. So hopefully it'll calm down. It's better if it just gets cold and stays cold or stays warm, <laughs> but the uh, uh, bouncing up and down uh, at the freezing point is where we t tend to see the most majority of them. Um, I know you probably, I don't know if we have statistics for this, but could we put um, like all the main, I know we've had several, but the main breaks that we've had, could we put the somewhat of an age on those pipes that were in the ground? I obviously I know might be hard for some of them with the age of our community, but just to kind of educate us a little bit on how long of a life cycle some of these pipes might have or not have. 
Yeah, we could. We actually have a map that um, we're keeping track of where the main breaks are. That's how we kind of figure out what's the hot spot as far as trying to do our water main replacement. So um, what we haven't done is put the age into it, but we can put that together relatively simple and uh, get an idea of what that would look like, yeah. Thank you. The snow that's coming in, that should help insulate a little bit, right? A blanket would be helpful, yes. Yeah. Yeah, I saw that was bad. All right, uh, with that, if there's anything else, nothing else, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved.